out if I need anything. So, um, so uh, today's this is the agenda. Uh, I'm just going to go through introductions uh, for Lakes Task Force and um, their team and the agencies. Um, GEI is going to provide an update of value engineering for the um, two upper dams, Secord and Smallwood. Um, we're going to move on to Secord Dam and talk about the design changes um, with the alternatives that we've been meeting with the Part 315 folks. Um, so we're going to provide that update to everyone else. Um, give an update of our general civil site review, um, permitting, and, and a local agency and utility coordination update. And then we'll move on to, to Smallwood Dam. Same thing, talk about the design changes of the alternatives that were presented to the Part 315 folks. Give a civil site review update, a permitting update, a local agency and utility coordination update. And then we'll move to the two southern dams, um, Edenville and Sanford, and we'll talk about the design criteria report that was submitted to Eagle and AECOM and talk about the design alternatives for both Sanford and Edenville. And then I'll give a brief update uh, where we're at with the natural resources restoration study um, to date. And then we'll open it up for comments and questions after talking about the schedules for both Secor Dam, Smallwood Dam, and Edenville and Sanford. Um, so on the screen, obviously there's quite a few folks involved with this project. Um, we've got Dave Kepler from Four Lakes Task Force, and all these folks should be on the call today. Dave Rothman, um, Adam Heinrich, Brad Fedorchek, and Greg Ewell with Four Lakes, um, with Spicer Group, Ron Hansen, Brian Bowles, uh, myself, Kelsey Sutton, Warren Miller, Derek Huff, um, Mike Nurse, and Aaron Snell with Streamside. Um, from GEI's end, we've got Paul Drew, Jim Nickerson, Mike Carpenter, Andy Baxter, and Bill Walton. And I don't know if Phil Martin's on the phone, um, but he's been assisting with our um, with our team with the cost estimations. Um, and then on Mergence end, Rob Roos, Andrea Sampson, and Ken Lester, and then Dalen Wolnoff with Central Michigan University, who's been heading up the muscle surveys for all four of the lakes. And then from the agency, agency side, uh, part 315 folks, got Dan Vaughn, Mike Size, Luke Trumbull. Um, from the part 301, 31, 303, uh, Jared Saunders, Ann Garwood, Mike Pentington, Mike, Mike Pentington, Brian Rudolph, Katie Blodgett, Nicole King. Uh, from the DNR, we got Randy Claremont, Jessica Mistak, Jeff Jolly, April Simmons, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, Jess Pruden, Pete Horody. And then Todd Zielinski and Dan, Dan Basher from the NRCS. Um, so I'm going to kick it off to Paul Drew, who's going to provide an update for value engineering at the two upper dams, Secord and Smallwood. Paul? Yep, great. Thank you, Kelsey. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, so we had a uh, meeting last week with uh, the Eagle Dam safety staff as well as AECOM uh, to kind of review the progress on the value engineering um options at both Secord and Smallwood um, really to optimize uh the designs and, and kind of rework a little bit of the footprint of Secord Dam. Um, so we developed <clears throat> two viable alternatives at Secord, which was a uh modified auxiliary spillway, RCC uh, versus concrete um, in a different location, as well as a new cutoff wall that was going to replace um, the, the former proposed SSP cutoff wall. Um, so presented those results um, to that group and in a separate meeting, more of a technical meeting, I think we'll give kind of a very high level update today. Um, but if if any folks have any questions on that, we can provide that information, at, at, you know, separately. And then at Smallwood, uh, really kind of keeping within the same footprint of the previously proposed auxiliary spillway, but actually just reducing the size um, slightly and, and swapping out um, portion of that from from concrete to rock. Uh, so anybody that was on that call, we provided the slide deck. Um, I think Mike size, I think the only one from Eagle that did attend, I think Dan was not able to as well. Um, Dan, were you able to get that slide deck? Um, and I guess we don't have to go through any questions here today, but if you have anything, definitely feel free to reach out to me and, and Paul Perry, we can go through it together. Yeah, I got it. I'm going to look at it in detail. Uh, Mike size gave me the 10,000 
foot uh, overview of the discussions, but um, sounds like it was fairly consistent with what you guys had presented a couple of weeks ago. Yep, and that we've got we've got a few slides here later in the deck that kind of show um, our new schedule and, and kind of the key milestone dates. So I think we can keep moving, Kelsey. Okay, so then we're going to just jump into Secor Dam. Uh, we'll talk about the design changes, review civil site review. Um, I'll talk about the environmental permitting and where we're at. And then Brian Bowles with Spicer Group is just going to give an update pertaining to our local agency and utility coordination. All right, so this uh, <clears throat> this slide is kind of a pretty high level overview of, of what we're proposing. Uh, we've been coordinating with the wind one pass on this new cutoff wall. Um, kind of different technology than driving steel sheet pile, but this is, uh, you know, we're kind of going through our proof of concept and, and the engineering design um, or swapping the system out. Uh, Carlin Grundeman has been kind of leading that task. Um, and again, we had some pretty, pretty good discussions last week, um, so we don't really want to go too far into it. I think the, the, the high level is it's a different technology here. Um, we are going through all of this seepage and stability calculations to make sure this is um, this is going to work. Um, it does result in some slight modifications to the grading plan. I believe the impacts actually are going to be slightly less. Um, if you go to the next slide, Kelsey, I think one thing that we're working through, thank you, on this slide is that we do have to cut down the crest uh, about three feet. Uh, just to get the um, about a 25 foot wide work platform uh, to construct this. And we're proposing to do this here very quickly um, in terms of a construction duration um, so that the risk of the lowered um, embankment um, is, is relatively low. Um, so we're working through kind of this revised grading plan, uh, the new sequence of work, all the seepage and stability calculations, um, and working with uh, DeWin to come up with a mixed design uh, for this cutoff wall. Um, so you'll be seeing a lot more information, but you, I think you can kind of see in this drawing here, the impacts are, are less than we proposed previously. Um, and, and and later in the slide deck here, we'll kind of show when when you're going to see see new information on, on this. Um, I don't know if Carlin, if you're on the call, if there's any high level information that I glossed over that you want to add to it. But if not, we can keep moving. Can I be yeah, Carlin? Go ahead, Carlin. Yeah, I was just going to say the only thing I'd really add to that, Paul, is the I uh, just want to point out that we are retaining some sheeting to tie into the the training walls there, and so there's an intersection between the sheeting and the the cutoff wall. Um, that's a detail that we're working out, but the timing of that installation is important. And I think other than that, um, you know, we we are planning to include some upstream uh, super stacks super or other stack. additional flood support during construction to prevent overtopping in the event that there was a flood while that crest is cut down. So that's um, probably it. Great. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, thank you. And those those are the details that are really tying it into the existing existing spillway structures, right? Because it's tough to get to get in there and install it that in that location, right? Yeah, for the sheeting, correct. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. And then um the other kind of this is kind of a, a bigger, bigger change in terms of overall impact. Um actually has a smaller, smaller footprint on the site, but we're proposing uh to swap out the previously proposed auxiliary spillway. Um, if you kind of remember that alignment, it it hugged Secor Dam Road pretty closely um, within within our current right of way. Um, so this is this is a new alternative um, with would be an RCC side channel spillway. Um, and I think on the next slide, it kind of shows a few of the benefits here. Is that we get rid of the flashboards that were previously proposed. Uh, the dam crest is up at a higher elevation uh, because the spillway is is significantly longer um, on the dam crest. Um, we would be, you know, constructing this with an RCC plan on site. Um, we provide greater separation between Secor Dam Road as well as the as the road bridge um, from our spillway, and we're working through the detail um, of making sure that this integrates well with the new proposed cutoff wall. Um, we've been doing a significant amount of hydrology hydraulics to analyze this um, new spillway, and we're running this through a CFD model. Um, and we'll be presenting that as part of our 90% design. So we've we've done enough proof of concept to feel comfortable with this design, presented it to uh, Eagle and AECOM. Um, I think we're on the same page moving forward and we'll provide uh, a lot more information going forward. Yeah, in this slide here, Kelsey, I think uh, kind of summarizes all of that. So um, a lot more, lot more to see here as part of our 90% um, design. 
um, but all of these new site impacts that we've proposed um, would be you know submitted as part of our, our correction request on the new impacts um, on Secord on the on the Secord dam site. Thanks, Paul. Brian. Thanks, Kelsey. Um, as you see here, here's a kind of a general site layout of the east side of Secord Dam. Um, similar to some some figures that we have shown in the past, but this replaces the old um, auxiliary spillway that basically hugged the um, Secord Dam Road right away with the RCC spillway. You can, we can kind of see with the, the brown shaded area kind of represents the some uh, areas that we're going to have to work with for access and staging. Um, in general, I think um, this design, the impacts are, it gives us a little more um, cushion away from the road right away, uh, a little more space to work with, um, maybe some some options as far as um, how we handle the storm drainage and the storm sewer system off of Secord Dam Road. So those are some um, um, design details that we're, we're taking a look at, but I think kind of generally it's a, it's a net positive relative to, uh, you know, the, the county road um, and road right away. Um, one area that's complicated a little bit is um, the downstream um, slope of the berm um, for the, the powerhouse. We, we, we don't really have the feasibility of uh, getting vehicle access down to the lower door of the powerhouse. Um, so we're, we're looking at some, some new design um, alternatives for, for the powerhouse as far as being able to um, reach loads to the to the top top of the berm and be able to access through maybe options such as gantry cranes and things like that. So um, that's 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 sort of a an area that we're we're working through um, design options right now. Um, so I think we can move to the next one. Thanks, Brian. Yep. So we've obviously submitted the Secord Dam permit and we had received the correction request um, with the alternatives um, and the change of the design. Um, we obviously need to modify the uh, permit submittal. So we will be doing exactly the same that we've we've done in the initial submittal. And I think we've already talked about this, obviously, with the 301, 31, 303 and 315. Um, and then obviously with the uh, other additional applicable permits, soil erosion, notice of coverage, any um, county road commission permitting, um, and then any additional planning or zoning building permitting, we'll be moving through those efforts as well. Um, so obviously with the alternatives that Brian or that Paul Drew talked about, um, we'll be making those necessary modifications to the permitting sheets that were submitted to Eagle as part of, as part of the My Waters permit application. Um, I'm just going to briefly go through uh, what's to be expected with that submittal. So we'll be modifying our Part 31 sheet um, to reflect that change in the auxiliary spillway. Obviously, with uh, the design civil changes that Brian talked about, it's not 100% yet, but we'll be working to um, modify as applicable the Part 31 sheets. Um, the cross sections will be updated and quantities will be updated as applicable and will be resubmitted the same way that we initially did. Same thing with 301, um, based on hey, the alternative. Hey, Kelsey, hey, yep. sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you. I think there's there's a question. Sorry. Dan Vaughn, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. You actually started diving into a little bit more maybe of what I was raising my hand about. Um, and Brian uh, Rudolph, you can comment on this as well. Um, but just to go ahead and kind of state from our viewpoint, uh, as you guys are looking to submit uh, modified plans and documents, um, as we consider you know, putting this out for public notice, I think it's going to be really important for us to be able to have, you know, a clean set um, uh, when we actually get to the point where we're looking at administratively complete uh, package. Um, we'll want to have a clean set. So rather than sending us sheets here and there that you're swapping out, we'll want to have a complete package. Yep, and that's the plan too. Um, so the uh, the dam, all the dam design work and the um, environmental permitting sheets, it's going to be one complete set and that'll all be resubmitted the same way that we've done um, in the past. So the modifications that Paul um, has been having discussions with you and as stated during this meeting, that will be included with our um, permit submittal. 
Brian Rudolph, did you have a comment on that? Are you good? No, no, I think Dan Dan caught it. We just have to have a very comprehensive plan set for the yep. public noticing so that yep. everybody Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yep. And then the same thing with the three or with the 301. Um, obviously, there'll be some modifications on the upstream face, and um, those quantities and cross sections will all be updated to reflect that those changes with the alternatives. And then the same thing with the um, part 303 wetlands. We'll be modifying cross sections as applicable with the, with the modifications to the design. Um, any temporary or permanent impacts will be called out. Uh, quantities, cross sections, and everything will be updated um, pending on design changes. Um, one and one other thing to note on that: we have been having um, communications pertaining to wetland credits, and we'll be working on um, putting together de documents as far as total quantities of impacts um, in the next coming month. Brian? Yep, hi Kelsey. Um, okay, so on local agency and utility coordination, um, like I mentioned um, in the slide previously, uh, we will be working with the, the staff at Gladwin County Road Commission on the, um, on, on the revised um, uh, designs for 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 Secor Dam. Um, we had previously shared the 60% drawings, which you know they were they were generally uh, you know positive as far as input. Um, you know, pending final designs, we're kind of set the clock back a little bit and you know adjusting the designs. But I, I think in general the impacts with the road commission will be somewhat less. Uh, township land use permitting, I think. Um, Again, we had shared the 60% drawings um, at that time. Those uh, uh, not not too much feedback on the 60%, other than work we we're going to be doing at the powerhouse. We will be having some significant changes, I think, to the powerhouse design. So uh, those are in development, and we'll be you know working closely with uh, uh, the township and then the you know, county building department, uh, especially especially uh, soil erosion and sedimentation control with the conservation district. Um, you know, certainly are, you know, revising the layout and grading plan and we'll be um, adjusting the SCSC plans accordingly. Um, some fairly significant changes relative to consumers energy. Um, we had originally planned on, um, you know, taking the, the overhead uh, high voltage line that comes from the east along the north side of Secord Dam Road. Uh, the original plan was to take that underground underneath um, the old um, auxiliary spillway design to be able to come up on the kind of on the other side where we had some more flat area to work with to have a transformer pad and to be able to feed the powerhouse. Um, that's not going to be the case now um, with that the new um, spillway um, and then the, the steeper slopes on the downstream side of the embankment really aren't allowing us for to have that underground service from the east side. Um, so we're going to be working closely with consumers energy to um, I think what we're going to be looking at is extending the overhead high voltage um, further to the west across the across the river, probably along the south side of Secord Dam Road, and then come up um, our new uh, west side access roads that you can you can sort of see on this this drawing here, and then and then basically probably go underground and then feed uh, the powerhouse from the west side. So that's that's probably the main um, change relative to utility coordination that we're looking at, but uh, we're working through those details. Um, so I guess that's it. Any, unless there's any questions. Thanks, Brian. Does anybody have any questions pertaining to CCOR before we jump into Smallwood? Okay. Paul? All right. So for, for CCOR, I uh, mentioned earlier the, the overall footprint of of Smallwood's auxiliary spillway actually goes down. Uh, we've looked at a few a few ways to optimize the spillway. Uh, the first is adding a contraction once we get around um, around the curve and we head down towards the drop structure. Uh, the second is replacing a portion of this um, for from from concrete to rock. So to achieve that, um, added a very flat slope um, for a good portion of the spillway. Uh, while also adding a, a formal stilling basin immediately downstream of the initial drop. Um, so if you go to the next slide there, Kelsey, um, kind of see it here in, in CFD that we have our, our spillway in the same elevation, um, adding concrete steps, baffle blocks, and an end sill uh, to knock down a, a significant portion of the energy immediately downstream. 
And then if you go to the next slide, um, kind of see that, you know, once we get past the stilling basin, um, swapping out for some pretty large rock uh, before we get to our concrete drop structure that gets submerged um, during any major or major flood event. Um, so kind of working through these these hydraulics, uh, we've been analyzing this in 1D and CFD and feels like we're we're locking in pretty closely to what, uh, what we're going to propose as part of 90 percent. And then if you look on the next slide that, you know, we're right now working through uh, appropriately sizing that rock. Um, this is going to be a specialty rock. It's going to be greater or larger um, size than a typical MDOT heavy. Um, if, for those on the call that re remember, we did add some pretty large rock um, downstream of the uh, sediment control structure at the Edenville phase two stabilization. Um, we're looking at some some core specs right now and likely will be really larger than that material that has been performing uh, pretty well with some high flows here this spring. So working through that, uh, what that specification will be, but it definitely is going to be specialty larger than normal, um, and that'll all be submitted as part of our 90% our design. So in terms of, you know, major wholesale changes to small wood, really it's, it's very minor, just uh, changing our footprint here a little bit, uh, actually reducing it from what we previously submitted. Thank you, Brian. Okay, thanks, Kelsey. Um, yep, as far as the general site civil review for, for small wood, um, the alternative one changes with the spillway don't really impact the, the general civil too much. Um, we're, we're basically, you know, most of our efforts going towards advancing the, the designs. Um, we are, um, I would say the one impact that, that we do have is we're, um, we do have some um, changes to the, the powerhouse design as far as, um, you know, the, the grading that we're, we're going to be doing in order to get the um, elevation up above the flood elevation. So I think we're definitely looking at a brand new building um, at the powerhouse, and that's something that we'll, we'll work closely with the county on. Um, other than that, we are um, just, you know, finishing up our, our roadway designs. Um, the other thing that we're, we're looking at is um, small wood dam, you know, a little bit different from um, Secord has probably uh, a little more of a remote location and there's more um, local county roads that potentially are going to be impacted as haul routes. So we're starting to look at, uh, you know, potential for, for road restoration. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're working towards engaging the, the road commission for, for things like that, but not, not too much else changing as far as the, the general site civil. So um, unless there's any questions, I think we can move on. Thanks, Brian. And then similar to CCORD, we'll be modifying the permitting plans, obviously with the changes at Smallwood, um, the impacts and the permitting sheets won't change drastically, but we will be updating as applicable um, for the 301, 31, 303, um, 315 dam safety. And then similar to CCORD, we'll be submitting for the other additional applicable permits. So the modifications to the auxiliary spillway, spillway will be um, depicted within the, you know, the part 31 floodplain sheet. So we'll be modifying the material change um, and then updating as applicable the cross sections and quantities. And then the same thing for 301 um, with the change in the auxiliary spillway. Um, you'll just see that change in material, and then if any of the quantities change, that'll be reflected in the resubmittal, and then the cross sections will be updated appropriately. And then the 303, obviously, there won't be, um, at this point in time, there are no proposed changes from the initial submittal with the alternative, so you should be expecting a similar submittal from the initial time that we submitted, submitted these sheets, but if anything changes, these will be modified um, as applicable and cross sections and quantities will be reflected in the um, updated My Waters application. Brian? Thanks, Kelsey. Um, yep, not a whole lot different on the utility coordination front for Smallwood. Um, I think just as a review, as we've talked about um, in past meetings, uh, we will be having a um, uh, relocation of the high voltage overhead line which you can you can kind of see along the, the, the sort of the bottom diagonally along the sheet coming up uh to get that off of the off the berm um we're going to be uh you know bringing that uh, through some tree clearing 
basically to tie in near the um, the existing substation, which would um, uh, tie into the um, uh, the new powerhouse. Um, that's not, not a whole lot changed there. Thanks, Brian. Does anybody have any questions with Smallwood? Okay, and we'll talk about the schedules at the end of the presentation. Um, moving down to the two lower dams, we'll start with Edenville first. Um, we did submit a design criteria report at the end of February to Eagle and AECOM. Um, at this point in time, we have received comments from AECOM. Um, we have not received anything from Eagle. Um, Mike Sizer, Dan Devon, were you anticipating comments or do you know when we can expect uh, receiving something from you guys? Uh, we we have been looking at the documents. We've um, we've got a couple of comments. Uh, uh, we're still having some internal discussions on a uh, a couple of topics, uh, but I anticipate here within the next week that we'll probably have our uh, comments back out to you guys. Okay, great, thank you. I'm assuming you're just going to email those out. We'll email them out, or we'll we'll drop them into the comment log form that you guys had provided us. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so we wanted to talk about uh, what was included in that design criteria report, uh, first and foremost, pertaining to the um, the permitting approach for the two lower dams. Um, as included in those design criteria reports for part 301, we are going to be submitting um, any temporary or permanent impacts on the upstream face or downstream face, and we identified what those ordinary high water marks are for each Edenville and Sanford. Um, for floodplains, we will be including uh, temporary or permanent um, impacts on the downstream face only, obviously, and depicting um, quantities and cross sections, et cetera, um, in addition to the, the plan sheets um, and applicable quantities, we'll be submitting the Part 31 hydraulic report um, and model to EGLE with the permit submittal. Um, we will not be um, submitting any type of LOMER or LOMER uh, letter of map change um, with our permit application submittal, but we will be submitting um, updated flood, flood inundation maps. Uh, for part 303 for the wetlands, we will be submitting temporary and permanent impacts and quantities for our dam construction footprint only. Um, and w at this point in time, we have um, completed the wetland de delineation for the for the Edenville site, and you'll be see seeing a similar submittal as the upper two dams with the delineation report and pictures and documentation provided by Mergent. And those quantities will be reflecting that wetland delineation report that was completed by uh, by Mergent. And then the dam safety will be similar as far as um, submitting the uh, dam footprint and then the quantities uh, associated with the um, with the structure itself. Um, and then additional permitting, obviously, with Edenville uh, as falling into two counties, we'll be submitting soil erosion permits for both Midland and Gladwin counties. Um, notice of coverage uh, will be submitted uh, via My Waters as applicable. Um, any road commission permitting, any local planning, zoning, building permitting will be um, completed. And then um, I'll let Rob Roos from Mergent touch later on in the presentation pertaining to the SHPO Section 7 Part 365. Um, and then any MDOT coordination will be uh, coordinated appropriately. Does anybody have any questions with that or comments? Um, then moving on, um, I have Mike Carpenter from GEI that's going to talk about the uh, various design alternatives with Edenville. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, we went through this last week with dam safety, so this is pretty heavy on the on the 315 uh, side of things. But um, this kind of summarizes what we wound up doing over the last month here. We had a meeting. Um, not last week, but the week before, uh, going through all these alternatives, and and I'm happy to say we we've, we've selected um, the, the the best combination of alternatives to move forward. Um, unlike the upstream dams, we're essentially right at 30 percent 
Um, so with the selection of the alternatives, uh, you know, we'll be now moving forward into the 60% design mode. Um, just real quickly cover all the alternatives that we did consider. Um, similar to the discussion upstream alternative, you can go back to the previous slide. Sorry, Kelsey. Um, it was just looking at the different types of cutoff walls. Um, we want to take a look at whether or not we can reduce the amount of embankment fill um, uh, by using a parapet wall. And then we considered uh, what it would, uh, the differences between hydraulics and costs and, and uh, complexity between removing all the powerhouse uh, or half the powerhouse. So that the half powerhouse removal is actually shown in that 3D image. Um, at the top there in the full powerhouse, there's an, I think an image that shows the entire powerhouse be removed. Um, okay, move on. Um, so these just summarize the goals of uh, what we had wanted to do during our meeting the last uh, or two weeks ago, and basically just select the best uh, value alternative uh, to move forward with. Uh, and summarize, make sure it's we've got a document that uh, summarizes why we chose what we chose. OK, sorry, Mike. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so this is just a visual of uh, what the different uh, uh, alternative one and one A was um, uh, very similar again to what you've seen upstream. We've got the steel sheet pile cutoff wall in that upper image and then the lower image is the SCB. Um, uh, uh, you know, or one pass type uh, wall that um, Paul was talking about. Um, it turned out, it, we've concluded that it was definitely more cost effective to go with the SCB wall, uh, and we wound up adopting it into the other other options because it just made sense. That said, there, just like upstream, there are some uh, components or areas where we're going to be installing sheet piling anyhow um, to tie into the concrete structures. Okay. So this was um, just a visual to give you an idea of what we were considering for the parapet wall. And um, so rather than adding embankment for flood freeboard, basically waves during an IDF event, um, you know, put in a wall rather than a bunch of soil. Um, and so that the upper um, image just depicts where the wall would be approximately, it'd be on the upstream face. And then the hatching there indicates, you know, the amount of uh, savings in, in embankment fill. There is a red line on the downstream side. If we keep that 15 foot crest width, there's also a savings on the downstream slope that uh, that we didn't factor into the alternatives, but uh, we will be as we move forward. So the conclusion there was um, there wasn't really a, an overall savings, a, a nominal one, um, uh, but where it really makes a lot of sense and this came out of the alternatives meeting is you use a parapet wall where the embankments are tall but therefore we get a much um, better return on the amount of embankment savings that we get and uh, and then in the areas where the embankment's short uh, we'll just raise the embankment because there's really not a lot of um, savings by putting in a parapet wall so that's uh, again what we'll be moving forward with so uh, here's alternatives uh, three through five and three through five and six through nine are, are essentially repeats um, with alternative three and alternative six being the base cases. So all all these three A, three B, four and five are just compared back to alternative three. Alternative three was closest to the 30 percent design. Again, it was the half powerhouse removal. And uh, you can see all three of the structures that factor into alternative three. Um, uh, you've got the labyrinth that'll be over at the um, the breach channel uh, location. You've got the Titabuasi spillway again, the half powerhouse with three gates in it. We have thrown in a, a low level outlet structure um, that you can see kind of on the on the right side. You can just see the window looking upstream. Similarly, on, on tobacco, we've got two big crest gates and then you can barely make it out. There's a small slot in there for a smaller uh, low level outlet. Uh, we did consider with uh, th option 3A, a larger low level outlet in tobacco. Um, and and uh, so during the uh, meeting, we, we actually settled in on what types of flows that we wanna push through these low level outlets. Um, basically, we just 
are trying not to operate the uh, crest gates during freezing weather. Um, we considered alternative 3B, which was a, a secondary or a second labyrinth over on the tobacco side of right embankment. Alternative four was, um, you know, uh, we can push more water through these structures if we allow the IDF pool to, to be raised by an additional foot. So we considered that. And alternative five was, hey, if we want to try to push more water through the tobacco side, what if we put in 18 uh, foot tall gates? So um, we went through all that and you can go on to the next slide. Um, and then this is six through nine, so same um, repeat of, of, of alternatives, higher IDF pool, a taller gates at uh, tobacco, and then we did throw in an uh, alternative nine where we had just taller gates on, on all the structures. Um, so we did go through a, a you know a formal selection uh, process where we used a matrix to help us pick which option is the best or which alternatives are the best. This was our selection criteria that we that we used, um, and uh, we weighted each of those options. So if you look at the table, you can see across the top is the selection criteria. Um, vertically in the in the rows are each of the alternatives. This is a summary table. We actually went through um, two different iterations. We had all the options that boiled it down to um, a top three, and the, those top three are shown in this table as far as alternatives. And then on the right, you can see that the, the, the bigger the number, the bold number 14 is the one that um, bubbled up as being the best option, and that was alternative uh, three. It's also, again, the one that was closest to the 30% design. So what did we come up with uh, coming out of that meeting? Uh, the SEB cutoff wall was the uh, was the chosen alternative there. The parapet wall is also appropriate to use, uh, although selectively be um, in just the higher part of the embankments. Alternative three geometry was the best alternative to advance forward. Um, and um, let's see. Yeah, we presented it last last week, and then we are working on finalizing the alternative uh, report now. I'm just waiting for some uh, edits to some final figures here, and we should have that that finalized. And is there anything else there? Or there was. Nope, oh, you're good. Okay. Any any questions for me? Not hearing any. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. You bet. OK, then moving on to Sanford Dam. Um, same thing, similar to how I explained the Edenville Dam um, within the design criteria report, we laid out our permitting roadmap and our approach for how we were going to prepare and submit the Eagle permit application. Um, so the same thing, uh, we identify ordinary high water mark on the upstream and downstream face. Um, floodplains will be um, submitted on the downstream phase. We will be um, submitting the updated flood inundation maps. No letter of map change will be submitted. Um, we will be submitting with the permit um, application the uh, chapter uh, part 31 model and report. Um, with the 303, again, this is just going to be specific to the construction footprint of the dam only. Um, Mergent has completed the uh, dam construction footprint wetland delineation at this point in time, and that'll be submitted as all of the other um, dams have been submitted for the Part 303. And then dam safety will, will obviously be um, with the dam uh, footprint itself. And then any additional permitting, um, soil erosion, notice coverage, um, any, any road commission permits, um, anything local, and then Rob can touch on the um, the SHPO Section 7, Part 365 at the end when we talk about the schedules. Um, at this point in time, Andy Baxter with GEI, would you like to walk through the um, Sanford Dam alternatives that we talked about? Thanks, Kelsey. Um, all right, so uh, just uh, right in parallel with, uh, with Mike, uh, we went through a Sanford Dam uh, alternatives effort uh, this past month um, 
effort will culminate in our meeting uh, just said two weeks ago. We went through alternatives and, and selected one to move forward to progress the 60% design. Uh, at Sanford, we worked, looked at it more of a wholesale uh, alternatives. Um, we had in focusing in on the on the on the gated structure as well as the main embankment, the right embankment. Um, the base design, which is what was presented in the 30%, uh, didn't meet uh, the updated flows flow requirements, and so we updated that 30% design. Uh, so that's your 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 eight gates. So modifications to the powerhouse and the embankment, the right embankment. Uh, is an earthen embankment with a, with a 350 foot labyrinth auxiliary spillway, similar to what's at Edenville, what's proposed at Edenville, and that and that labyrinth did get expanded from 250 to 350 feet, um, and uh, and that that generated this kind of starting point for for the alternatives. Uh, the big change that that went from the third went from the base to the alternatives is the IDF flood elevation. Um, went from the, as you can see, 634 and a half to 638. What that enabled us to do was to uh, reduce the uh, primary spillway capacity, uh, meaning at the same capacity, but at the higher head elevation, uh, we were able to reduce the number of gates from eight to six. And then we looked at the at the embankment, and each of the alternatives is a different embankment and auxiliary spillway. So for the first one, we're we're still with the labyrinth, um, the labyrinth spillway. So you can see the spillway uh, width actually reduces uh, from 350 to 250, and um, and you still you know similar earthen embankment. Uh, alternative two uh, is a is a basically a complete removal of the earthen embankment and replacement with uh, a full RCC structure that extended from glacial till up to uh, up to the to the crest elevation. And, you know, through the center of that is a uh, long straight weir um, with a low section in the RCC, which overtops during uh, during the flood events. And then the third alternative is, is taking that same approach with a long with a long weir. And instead of doing the full RCC section, uh, you have the earth and embankment with the RCC overtopping. Uh, we went through this, and I'll talk a little bit later about the selection, but uh, landed uh, for several reasons on the earth and embankment. We've got a couple of slides now talking about that with the RCC overtopping. So starting from the left embankment, which is at the bottom right of the screen, um, you've got the powerhouse with the three uh, with the three um, bays. Uh, that is you know, wholly unchanged. Uh, there'll be some modifications for stability to it, but generally unchanged. And then you have your spillway structure, which currently has six gates or six six bays, and we're we're keeping those six bays and and replacing them with with the new uh, gates, just as you saw at Edenville. Uh, working your way around, you have your low level outlet structure, uh, and then an embankment section, uh, non overtopping embankment section, and then the long weir. So this is. That this whole section from uh, from the low level outlet extending through the the turn and and the overflow section and off to the to the right um, abutment is all RCC um, overtop protected. So we've got we've got a level there. So uh, training wall overtopping and then um, and then right embankment. So you can see the alignment is very similar to what the current alignment of the embankment is. Um, and in general, we've got a, it's going to be a higher embankment to accommodate the higher IDF, and uh, and and still pass our our IDF. Okay, next. Here's a cross section through the RCC, um, and what you're looking at is you have the earthen embankment in yellow. You've got your your sheet pile cutoff wall, uh, which is going in with as part of the stabilization efforts and filter earth embankment and rcc overtopping um, laid down in lifts and uh, and placed across in the background you see uh, as a, a hard line is that is the training wall and then uh, the non overtopping embankment is the dash line so uh, in general you know very similar to what was what was pre-flood uh, except it's going to be a taller structure and now we've armored 
uh, both the uh, non over overtopping and the over and the overtopping section, meaning the auxiliary spillway um, with the RCC embankment, RCC protection. Selection criteria, uh, similar to, to Edenville, the main difference here is that uh, is the bottom bullet, um, which looks at um, is dam safety and, and, and resilience to greater flood conditions. This is the last dam in the line. Uh, and so what we looked at here said, you know, you know, we have IDF conditions and that's our design criteria. However, um, we, you know, we've got several structures upstream and we want to look at this as, as potentially being more resilient to um, to a higher flood uh, flood condition. We don't have uh, M30 issues um, and so we didn't we didn't need to look at those. Thanks. So conclusion, you know, we we went through that process. I didn't have the have the uh, the numbering here, but that uh, alternative three landed up top, and the reasons were related to the the cost effective um, and low construction risk. So so that specifically relates to the powerhouse itself by not having to do modifications to the powerhouse, reduce uh, risk there, and then the other big part of that is that we don't have to excavate to glacial till along the entire embankment length. Um, and so the dewatering requirements, the, the uh, foundation exposure, uh, all that kind of, we, we, mitigate, we mitigate those, those risks with this alternative, um, and yet we still provide uh, not just the, the needed level of protection, but some additional protection in, in the event of a, of a higher flood condition. Uh, as Mike said, we, we presented this on Friday, on uh, last Friday, uh, to Eagle and Acom, and um, we're in a similar boat where we're we're just about completed with a report, which uh, which presents these figures as well as as a discussion of our analysis. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, Andy. Does anybody have any questions for for Andy or for Sanford Dam? Okay. Thank you. Yep, thanks. Uh, Yep, so lastly, um, I just wanted to give an update um, pertaining to our natural resources restoration study. Um, as everyone um, knows, we did submit a feasibility study um, in May of 2021. Um, specifically, Chapter 8 um, talked about the plan for the restoration of the four lakes. Uh, these were specifically targeted for Sanford Lake and Wixom Lake. Uh, and the, that just, that chapter included discussions about wetlands, uh, fisheries, T and E, and then environmental permitting efforts. Um, as I mentioned, the eagle permitting obviously is uh, very defined by the various statutes, um, and uh, we've been working with eagle staff and putting together applications for all four of the dams. Um, and then the other portion of that is specific to the natural resources restoration study. Um, as everyone knows, there's really no set requirements for this. Um, as Four Lakes is not uh, responsible for what happened from the failures of the dams and the resources that were lost. So we are working on a study, and this specific study has uh, three separate sections, uh, one being the pre-flood, post-flood, and restoration. And each of those sections will discuss um, the wetlands, uh, fisheries, and habitat communities. Uh, and we've been working on this um, ongoing. We've been meeting internally, and we've been working on um, putting together this study. So the goals of this natural resources restoration study, obviously, is to um, summarize you know, what was there prior to the dam failures as what we're um, specifically calling pre-flood conditions, um, basically understanding what the ecosystem was prior to the failures of the dams. Um, and then obviously talking about post-flood conditions, what did the dam failures have as far as an impact to our ecosystem as a whole? And then um, lastly, our restoration efforts as far as understanding um, what future lake ma management initiatives will, um, will take place following the refilling of the lakes and understanding um, what the expectations of our, our ecosystem will be following the, the refill and the dam restoration efforts. Um, so obviously, uh, this is a big this is a big portion of obviously not the construction of the dams. Um, the ecosystem 
has been impacted. It's going to take time to um, to come back. Obviously, there's going to be uh, there's going to be things that you know we can't really control. So there's going to be um, human inter human intervention. Um, there'll be um, situations where the the restoration will come back by itself. There'll be things that we need to do to um, improve the system as a whole that uh, resulted from the dam failures. Um, at this point in time, um, we have been meeting, like I mentioned, internally with our um, with our group. Um, we have been having um, update update meetings with the uh, various agencies. We had been meeting biweekly; um, those switched to monthly, and we haven't had a meeting um, within the last uh, few months. Um, but we are working on drafting uh, the beginning chapters, so the forward and the first three chapters. Um, our team's working on the pre-flood and post-flood sections um, and any field work and getting ready for field work. Um, Mergent is going to be moving forward with um, monitoring wells and we're working th with Eagle and the DNR for securing permits for those installations. Um, so we are working on that. We anticipate that the study uh, will be published in September of this year. Um, so our team has been uh, dil diligently working on the upcoming um, release of those chapters and um, we will be having our next monthly meeting uh, in, in May. So um, I apologize for those meetings that haven't been occurring, but our team is still working on um, on this study and we look forward to uh, coordinating with the various agencies and getting feedback as we move th forward to publishing this study. Uh, Kelsey, just um, Dave Kepler, just to maybe to follow up, Jared and I talked. Uh, I, I would, we are looking at maybe having a small, you know, a working session in May um, to kind of go through those chapters and make sure that before we get the study published, folks understand the methodology we're looking at going forward uh, relative to what the study is going to show. So we're doing the upfront kind of damage assessment and uh, resource uh, impact and then just making sure everybody's going to look at that September report and understand the methodology we established to go forward in kind of the main time frame. So I think it's going to have to be a smaller, you know, kind of more face to face kind of meeting to kind of get that understood. And so uh, Jared and I kind of will work on that to kind of structure it. Great. Thank you. Um, then moving on to the schedule, so um, this depicts the schedule for all four of the dams, um, talks through the recovery, the construction phases, and then the environmental restoration portion for the two lower dams. Paul, did you want to give an update pertaining to the two upper dams as far as the uh, deliverables and dates that Eagle can be expecting? Yeah, no problem. Um, the as mentioned before, with with these changes that we have at Secord and Smallwood, um, the plan is that we would resubmit um, or response to the correction request in mid May, uh, which would include all of the topics that were talked about earlier today, um, and kind of working talking with Dan. Maybe that goes to public notice sometime in June, um, and then we are working towards while that is being done. Um, going through the rest of our 90% design package submittal by mid June, and then uh, looking for 100% uh, by by early August. So, kind of have some rapid pace uh, deliverables here over the next few months, but working to get this back on track and and submit it here uh, over the summer. Thank you. And then either Paul or Mike, did you want to um, talk through the Edenville and Sanford Dam? I would. And I also would like uh, Rob Roos with Mergent to touch on the cultural and T&E efforts after you guys get done. Um, yes, Mike, and, and uh, uh, other than um, we push back the um, risk assessment work from early May to later in May, uh, the schedule hasn't changed from what you guys have seen in the past um, uh, from a design perspective. Um, and everything else, I think, stayed the, the same as well uh, for Edenville. Okay. I don't know if you want me to go on any more detail than that. Nope, that's fine. Um, Andy Baxter, did you have any comments pertaining to Sanford? 
No, just that um, we're following the same schedule. You see their parallel design submittals. We do anticipate that, you know, as we go through that the that the Sanford stuff should come in about two weeks before Edenville. Um, but, uh, you know, when we get to October is when we'll we'll see that come to fruition. Thanks. Great, thank you. Um, Rob Roos, you just want to give an update pertaining to Berlantini? Yep, uh, just uh, cultural. We did complete field investigations last year and we did obtain uh, ship of letters of concurrence for the, the work areas for the property footprint of all the impacts. So that's taken care of. Uh, for T&E, the muscle surveys are going to be kicked off this year uh, in Sanford and Edenville or Wixom Lakes. And uh, that survey status. I, I don't know if that's been approved yet by the DNR and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, but it's getting really close. Uh, so we got our ducks in a row. Yeah, it has, the ground running. Rob. It has. Oh, hey, Dalen. <laughs> it's getting close though, right, Dalen? Yeah, we got the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service um, approval just last week, the week before, and um, we're just waiting for temperatures before that starts. Gotcha. Thank you. And then, uh, Plan is to have uh, probably a report this winter and then uh, follow up surveys into the next year uh, as determined necessary based on what we find this year. So right now there's a lot of hypotheticals and trying to figure out what's what's happening out there and we'll see how the summer goes. Then teeny consultations uh, just to support any of the uh, federal nexus components of, of these projects. So the Fish and Wildlife Service Section 7 and the Michigan DNR consultations will be, be a result of those surveys and then the other Michigan Natural Features inventory submittals and other teeny work that's been done on site. And uh, they'll hopefully be concurrent with permitting or at least a, a really good picture of what's going on out there at that time. And as mentioned uh, with wetlands across the board, uh, we have completed field delineation as of last year at all these sites. and there is more to go with delineation of the bottomlands and things of like that, which we're touching base on in the lake restoration plan. And we'll have a mitigation plan ready to go with our permit application submittals later this year. Okay. 